Many people nowadays, they, they live a very fast-paced lifestyle and that they believe the key to success is working as much as possible. However, Proverbs 23, 4 and 5 of the GNT warns, be wise enough not to wear yourself out trying to get rich. Do not trust your own cleverness. Cast but a glance at riches, and they are gone, for they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. In other words, working too hard, wearing yourself out, trying to get rich could lead to the very opposite of your intended desires. Now, Malbim, rabbi and scholar of Hebrew, explains Proverbs 23, 5. One should divide one's time between studying the Torah and working. Just like with money, if one looks away from the Torah, knowledge will also fly away. The Talmud warns against engaging too much in business. The Talmud, Avat 2.5, states that one who engages too much in business cannot become wise. The Talmud again, Avat 410 advises, limit your business activities and occupy yourself with the Torah. The observance of Sabbath helps one to implement a healthy balance between work, rest, and acquiring wisdom. Leviticus 23.3 of the NIV states, there are six days when you may work, but the seventh day is a day of Sabbath rest. You are not to do any work. Wherever you live, it is a Sabbath. Exodus 20, 9 through 10 of the NLT reiterates, you have six days each week for your ordinary work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. And Exodus 28 of the NLT commands, Remember, remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. One should keep Sabbath sacred and keep it totally different from the other six days of the week. This means wearing better clothing and eating better food on Sabbath. Biblical Sabbath is celebrated on the seventh day of the week, a Saturday in the Hebrew calendar. A day begins at sunset and not at midnight. In Judaism, the Sabbath day begins at sundown on Friday and ends at sundown on Saturday. Now the Talmud, Shabbat 119a, contains a story we can learn from about Yosef, who honors Sabbath, also called Shabbat. It shows the value of celebrating Sabbath and how easily it is to lose one's wealth even if great precaution is taken. There was a Gentile in his neighborhood whose uh, property was extremely plentiful. And the astrologer said to the Gentile with regard to all his property, Yosef, who cherishes Shabbat, will consume it. The Gentile went and sold all of his property and with the money he received, bought a pearl. He placed the pearl, the expensive pearl, in his hat. And when he was crossing a river in a ferry, the wind blew the hat off and cast it into the water, and a fish swallowed the pearl. An angler caught this fish and brought it to the shore adjacent to a nightfall on Shabbat Eve. The other angler said, uh, who buys fish at a time like this? The townspeople then said uh, to the angler, go to bring it to Yosef who cherishes Sabbath as he regularly purchases delicacies in deference to Sabbath. They uh, brought it to him and he purchased it. He ripped the fish open and found the pearl inside it. He sold the pearl for 13 vessels filled with golden dinars. Tosafat, an elderly man who encountered him said, one who lends to a Sabbath, Sabbath repays him. Now the Talmud, Shabbos 119a, gives another story of a sage that was at one time hosted at the home of a very wealthy homeowner, and they brought him before a table of gold that was uh, so heavy it required 16 people to carry it. 
There were sixteen chains of silver attached to it. There were bowls and cups and pitchers and flasks attached to it. There were all sorts of food and delicacies and fragrant spices on it. In addition, when they placed it there, they would recite the Psalms 24-1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in the world and all who live in it. And when they removed the table, they recited from Psalms 115, 16, The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to mankind. The sage asked, My son, did you do to merit this? What did you do? And the wealthy homeowner answered, I was a butcher. And when I would come across parts from every animal that I slaughtered, that was exceptionally nice, I would say, This will be for the Sabbath. The sage replied, Happy are you that you merited this, and blessed is God who has afforded you all of this. Now the Talmud, Shabbos 23b, states that one who is meticulous in performing the mitzvah of Kadesh of the day merits and fills jugs of wine, meaning he will become wealthy. Kadesh is a prayer recited over a cup of wine immediately before the meal on the eve of the Sabbath. Now the Talmud, Shabbat 119a, says, with regard to the wealthy of other countries where there are no sages, by what virtue do they merit their wealth? Because they honor Shabbat. Since the Sabbath is a day mainly to study the Torah and pray, there is no work or cooking allowed. All meals should be prepared ahead of time, and dinner is to be the main event and a sacred event. The necessity of having everything prepared beforehand is meant to elevate the experience itself. Sabbath dinner is supposed to be the best meal of the entire week. Life in its totality should be a sacred endeavor and should be valued and cherished. Even the seemingly mundane activity of eating kosher food after blessing God with the right blessing elevates the food from a material state to a spiritual state. Now let's start with some basic activities from which we should refrain on Sabbath. Work or business transactions, writing, driving or riding in cars or other vehicles, shopping, using the telephone, turning on or off anything which uses electricity, including lights and radios, television, computers, air conditioners, and alarm clocks, cooking, baking, or even kindling a fire, gardening and grass mowing, doing laundry. During Sabbath, you can perform relaxing activities such as reading sacred ancient texts, praying, light exercise, socializing, walking pets, and meditating. Whatever is fun and relaxing is usually permitted on Sabbath. Now, if a person is exercising for enjoyment, it is permitted because there is a command called Oneg Shabbat, which means a person should do what is enjoyable on Sabbath. One should be careful, however, not to get sweaty and overexerted during exercise, because that goes against the spirit of rest that Sabbath is designed to provide. Now the Talmud states that you are to look forward to and delight in Sabbath. The way to delight in the Sabbath is by the enjoyment of tasty kosher food. Now the Talmud, Shabbos 118b, recommended a dish of cooked beets, large fish, and cloves of garlic. Yes, dietary guidelines during Sabbath include the following. Only kosher food is allowed to be consumed. Consumption of pork and shellfish are not permitted. One of the primary kosher rules is that meat and milk should not be combined in a meal. Separate utensils are used for each, and a waiting period is observed between eating them. 
If you eat light dairy food, you can wash your hands, eat some bread, and then eat meat. If you uh, ate meat, you should uh, wait six hours. Only then you can eat dairy foods. Meat must come from kosher animals that are slaughtered in a specific and painless manner known as shikita and uh, certain parts of the animal, including the blood, must be removed. During this process, a trained individual kills each animal quickly. Some believe this uh, form of butchering is much more humane and less painful than traditional slaughterhouse practices. Now, every butchered animal is closely inspected for signs of disease, and any animal that may have been sick is not to be used. Fruits, vegetables, and grains must be insect-free. Wine or grape juice must be certified as kosher. Now, why consume only kosher, kosher food and drink? Now, the majority of the laws and guidelines in the Bible and the Talmud are for our personal benefit. Now, if you view these guidelines as restrictive, you are only hurting yourself by not following these guidelines. Kosher food is better for us, both physically and spiritually. Kosher foods are healthier and highly superior compared to non-kosher food because of the strict rules under which they are produced and because of the close inspection and monitoring their certification requires. Now, why is the consumption of pork not permitted? The most important reason is that God specifically forbids it. However, it is now known that pork is a highly polluted and dirty source of protein. Yes, pigs consume almost anything they can chew, eating anything from manure to non-edibles like cardboard, plastic wrap, and packaging. Now, why is the consumption of shellfish not permitted? Well, unlike fish, which have fins and scales, giving them some measure of protection from pollutants, shellfish absorb all the toxin within the water that they live in. Shellfish are high in microplastics, heavy metals, as well as other toxins. So both pork and shellfish are very common sources of food poisoning. Avoiding pork and shellfish is a means of protecting one's health and well-being. Now, why are meat and milk not allowed to be combined uh, in a dish? Well, you see, meat and milk are incompatible food combinations causing digestive issues. Proper food combining can dramatically, I mean dramatically improve the quality of digestion and overall health. Now, since we shouldn't cook on the day of Sabbath, it simply means that we have to prepare meals in advance so that we celebrate in luxury. We may not cook or light a fire during Sabbath, so we cook before Sabbath and we keep the food warm through special methods. Now, these are therefore plenty of Sabbath cookbooks that they provide recipes that can be prepared in advance and kept warm with the use of a crock pot or other methods. From a health standpoint, be sure that the food kept warm for more than an hour remains hot, not lukewarm, to prevent spoilage. You see, a person should always set his table for Sabbath dinner with special care and preparations as if for an important feast. Give thanks and gratitude for the good food and then enjoy it. The Talmud gives some suggested prayers to recite. Yes, Shabbos 119a suggests reciting the following before enjoying the meal. Recite the blessing from Psalms 24 1 before eating. The earth and all that fills it is God's, the world and all that inhabits it. Recite the blessings from Psalm 115, 16, after eating. The heavens are God's heavens, but the earth he gave to mankind. To conclude 
Sabbath. The Talmud, again, Shabbos 119b, says that one who prays on Sabbath evening may recite Genesis 2, 1 through 3, and the heavens and the earth were finished. Mark Buchanan, author of The Rest of God, Restoring Your Soul by Restoring Sabbath, states that what we've really lost is the rest of God. The rest God bestows, and with it, that part of himself we can know only through stillness. Stillness as a virtue is a foreign concept in our society, but there is wisdom, wisdom in the rhythm of work and rest. Sabbath is a time to celebrate, to lavish, and enjoy life abundantly. Ecclesiastes 8.15 of the NET Bible says, so I recommend the enjoyment of life, for there is nothing better on earth for a person to do except to eat, drink, and enjoy life. So joy will accompany him in his toil during the days of his life, which God gives him on earth. Psalm 127.2 of the NLT says, It is useless to you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to his loved ones. It's very unfortunate and to their detriment that many Christians have neglected the laws and beneficial guidelines that are found in the Old Testament, such as observing Sabbath. Jesus kept a seventh-day Sabbath throughout his life on earth, although not as strictly as Orthodox Jews. In Matthew 5, 17 of the SCEV Bible, Jesus states, Don't suppose I came to do away with the law and the prophets. No, I did not come to do away with them, but to give them their full meaning. In this verse, Jesus states that he came to clarify certain laws and give them their full meaning, as in Matthew 5, 21 and 22, Matthew 5, 27 to 28, and Matthew 5, 31 to 47. Certain laws from the Old Testament are still to be followed, and they still reap rewards for Christians in this day and in this very age. St. Ignatius states, Let us therefore no longer keep the Sabbath after the Jewish manner, but let every one of you keep the Sabbath after a spiritual manner, rejoicing in meditation on the law. For a non-Jew, there is no need to observe Sabbath in the same exact manner as a Jew. However, keeping as many Sabbath laws and dietary guidelines as possible reaps the most benefit and reward for all. Only a non-Jew, B'nai Noah, also known as a Noahide, or righteous Gentile, who believes in God, obtains rewards for observing the Sabbath. In Jewish law, a non-believer Gentile, that's a goy, is even prohibited from observing Sabbath. Curie Amos Cherki, chairman of Brit Elom, the Nohad World Center, explains the goy and B'nai Noah are different halashic concepts. A goy is a Gentile who has not yet accepted the commandment of B'nai Noah. However, if he has already accepted the seven laws, he ceases to be a goy and becomes a bene Noah, and as such can follow additional commandments, including keeping the Sabbath. Rabbi Yoel Schwartz explains, when the Halashi states that it is forbidden for a non-Jew to keep the Sabbath, it is referring to a non-Jew that does not keep the Nohad laws, but a non-Jew who has accepted upon himself to keep the Nohad laws is permitted to keep the Sabbath. Shomo Lashaki, today known as Rashi, succeeded in completing commentaries to Judaism's most sacred texts, the Bible and the Babylonian Talmud. Rashi on the Babylonian Talmud, Yevamot 48b says, Every righteous Gentile who renounces idolatry needs to keep the Sabbath because every act that desecrates the Sabbath is itself a species of idolatry. 
Maimonides, one of the most prolific and influential Torah scholars, looked with favor on the righteous Gentile who performs a commandment out of faith in the Torah and explicitly asserted that the righteous Gentile receives a reward for doing so. And every commandment that a righteous Gentile performs is given a reward. Maimonides writes in Mishnah Torah, that's the laws of Kings 1010, if a Nohad wants to observe additional commandments besides the seven laws of Noah, he receives a reward from heaven. Radbaz, in his commentary on Mishnah Torah, wrote that it is permitted that a righteous Gentile performs a commandment only for the sake of receiving reward. Menachem ben Solomon Meir, or Hameri, in his commentary on Tractate Ovada Zara, says, even if a Gentile who studies the Torah fathoms its meaning and performs its commandments for their own sake, even he receives a reward, just as does a Jew, for it is written, by the pursuit of which man shall live. Leviticus 18.5. It does not say priests, Levites, and Israelites, but rather man. The Talmud, Shabbat 118a states that with regard to anyone who delights in the Sabbath, God gives him a very large reward. You will ride on the heights of the world. Psalm 37.4 says, You shall delight in God and he will grant you your heart's desire. The Talmud, Shabbat 118b, decodes this code with regard to anyone who delights in the Sabbath, God grants him his heart's desires. Thank you. Subscribe to our podcast and our YouTube channel.